tabletop exercise of sorts for this episode. This table is going to be our 2022 Battleground. Here on this table, just at my hands, are printouts of the names and faces of every possible presidential and vice presidential candidate. We'll move them around the table through three columns, president, vice president, and center. Just where do they belong exactly and where will they end up? It is politics as usual. I'm Pia Ontiveros. Now, three subject matter experts on packaging candidates and campaigning for them are going to be helping me to do that because the pandemic will not allow us to have all guests in the studio. Two of them will join via Zoom on this screen. Greg Garcia and Alan Herman joining us via Zoom, like I said, and Mr. Lito Banayo, who's here in the studio. Now, Greg and Alan and Lita will be able to see, uh, well, Greg and Alan via Zoom, of course, will be able to see the tabletop at all times. The camera above the table will make sure of that. Let's start with the president himself. Rodrigo Duterte, the runaway winner in 2016, started as the dark horse that came out from nowhere. 39% of the vote, 16.6 million votes. He cannot run for re-election, but could he, should he, would he, run for vice president for VP, the PDP Laban Cusi faction all out for a bongo Rodrigo Duterte tandem. So we're going to ask first our guests, uh, Lito uh, Banayo and Greg Garcia and Alan Herman, what they think of this. Uh, should he, could he, would he run for VP, Sir Lito? Uh, could he run? Yes. Uh, that is not uh, prescribed by the constitution. Should he run? Even if it, you know, some people say, in the, in the spirit of the Constitution, pwede hindi na lang. Ah, uh, hindi, hindi. Pag, hindi pwede yun. But pwede. yung should, um, I would normally, but that, that is a precedent. No? That's the first time it's going to happen. No? Mm -hmm. And it's quite unusual. I think it would depend on the dynamic uh, within the family. No? Mm -hmm. Would he run? The same, the same answer. It would depend upon he and uh, Mayor Sara Duterte's uh, conjoined decision if there's going to be any <laughs> we're going to talk about sarah in just a while um sir greg what do you think should he could he would he run for vp well let me just say that i think the they are very politically savvy okay so they know what's in store what's not in store so i don't think he will run oh you don't think he will run alan herman yeah uh i'm actually in agreement with uh, with both gentlemen uh the spirit of the constitution first of all has to be taken into consideration and not just the you know letter of its legality uh if there is indeed a loophole in the constitution that will allow him to run the spirit uh does not uh, actually permit him to run if we're talking about the spirit of the constitution being that the vice president is a heartbeat away from the presidency uh and i do agree that um there will be a a step down later on uh, that is my belief, that um, the president will not go for it as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, that is something to watch out for. And, you know, let's do that tabletop exercise like I said we would. So, Rodrigo Duterte, let's put him here in the vice president column. And since we're going to talk about this next, the Go Duterte uh, tandem that the, uh, well, Bongo, of course, the Go Duterte tandem that the PDP Laban Cusi faction wants to see or is uh, suggesting. What do you think of that, um, Alan? Uh, well, right now, Senator Bonga's numbers are just really uh, consistently have been low. Mm -hmm. He has uh, he has spent some considerable money. It's, it's clear, uh, even on social media, that uh, his promotions are in full speed. But uh, survey after survey uh, sees, seems sees him stuck in this plateau. So the pragmatism of it is, I'm not sure if. Uh, the machinery can carry the message and the man. Uh, elections being a man message, machinery and money proposition. Definitely he's got the machinery. Uh, I think he has the resources, but I'm not sure if that's enough to carry the yeah. the man and the message. Yeah, well, so, Sir Greg Garcia, what do you think? Go Duterte. No, I don't think it will happen again uh, <laughs> for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, they know the numbers. They have the numbers. And uh, number two, it just doesn't make sense for them to do it. I mean, as simple as that. I mean, mm. there's no sense. But of course, there is also the uh, Duterte, Duterte tandem, father, uh, sorry, baliktad na naman ako. Daughter, father tandem, Sarah Duterte and Rodrigo Duterte. Sarah has said that she will not run, 
uh, since her father is running and that uh, only one Duterte should run for uh, national office. Dati nga sabi ni Presidente na hindi daw pang babae tra trabaho ng Presidente. Pero nananapak ng sheriff yung si Inday Sara. A combo of questions here uh, for our guests. So, Sarah, Roddy, Tandem, si Sarah, tatakbo ba talaga? Or, and then, you know, for me, I'm just a bit curious. What a statement. Na parang, she won't run because her father's running for VP. What's that? What's it mean? Na parang, kung may, kailangan may isang Duterte na tatakbo for national, uh, for national position dito? Banana? Well, in the case of Mayor Inday Sara, I think it's pretty clear she knows it won't fly. No? Mm. Duterte, Duterte tandem will not fly. The people will reject something like that. And I think the president is quite savvy politically also to know that that won't fly. No? Hindi, hindi pwede yung, yung ganong uh, ginagawa sa isang probinsya o isang syudad itatranspose uh, mo sa national politics. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, Greg uh, Garcia, sir? Yeah, I, 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 I must echo what uh, Lito Banayo just said. How can uh, a how can you go up front and say father and daughter we run for president and vice president? No matter how much the country loves the Duterte, especially President Duterte, they will just stop and say, "Wait a minute, why should the father and daughter run the country?" You know, so mm -hmm. that's fraught with danger, talaga. Mm -hmm. And Alan Herman. Uh, well, circling back to uh, Greg's earlier point about the numbers. I'm sure that their teams also have uh, sentiment analysis, what you call uh, QSS or the sentiment numbers. And I'm sure that they are also cognizant of the fact that uh, a father-daughter tandem won't sit well with a Filipino voter. Mm -hmm. uh, that can be measured. Naman eh. And I'm sure that their numbers will validate the fact that hindi katanggap-tanggap sa Pilipino na father-daughter ang tumakbo na sabay. Okay, well, since pinag-usapan natin si Sarah Duterte, pag-usapan din natin yung supposed uh, Sarah Gibo Teodoro tandem that was supposed to happen. Kuno, according to Nonoy Adaya, sabi niya may announcement sa July. Sarah Gibo, of course, like, like we were saying earlier, no? kung, kung ano-anong, you know, the horses are just getting ready for the race, kung ano-ano kung ano -ano ang naririnig natin, and sometimes, uh, uh, you know, we don't know um, kung totoo na ba ito, but... Um, what do you think of this uh, Sarah Gibo tandem? You know, I love Gibo, but 10 years is a long, long time in politics. You know, so I, I don't know whether people remember how great Gibo was and how great Gibo could be. I don't know. May kasabihin nga sa atin, no? Para kanina eh, ang puto kailangan mainit. Pwede ba mainit yung puto? <laughs> after 10 years. <laughs> and yeah. even after you come in, what, number four ba siya? 2010, ano? Number four. Yeah. Yeah. No, not, yeah. Not very good numbers. All right. So, Sarah Duterte, Gibot, your daughter. Let's also talk about the uh, supposed. Uh, this was about two, three months ago. Sarah Duterte, Bong Bong Marcos, uh, supposed. I keep saying supposed. Dami kasi trial balloon eh. <laughs> Sarah Bong Bong. Because, and both Gibo and uh, Bong, it, of course, went to Davao uh, to greet her uh, in June on her birthday and brought her flowers. So, uh, what do you think of that? I think that will happen. Mm -hmm. I, I see based on the numbers, no, and historically based on the way candidates behave, I, I think it, there will be a Bong Bong Sara tandem. Ah, okay. Teka, balik tari natin, ha? You're saying Bong Bong Sara. Alan? Herman? Uh, I, believe, I believe the high probability will be Mayor Inday Sara and uh, former Senator Bong Bong. Uh, just to form that powerhouse tandem, the North-South Coalition na tinatawag mm, Okay, teka, balik ta rin na natin. Sana tama. Pati yung audience natin, nahihilos. And because of that, we need to take a very quick break. Pops, as usual, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. This is politics as usual. Uh, the Ping Lakson Tito Soto tandem. So let's move Ping up here in the president's column. And let's move Tito Soto here sa VP column right beside Ping. So Ping Lakson Tito Soto. Uh, Ping, of course, now Reforma chairman, a resurrected party, if I may say so, that was uh, formed in 1998. 
so that Renato Duvillo could run after being defeated by Joe Venetia, JDV, uh, in the Lacas and UCD primaries. Now, JDV won, by the way, because he was FVR, or Fidel Ramos's, for those who don't remember, FVR's choice for standard bearer. Also on the side, uh, uh, very quickly, no, iba yung primaries kasi sa America at iba dito sa atin. Wala naman talaga tayong real primaries. Kuno lang sa atin. Ganyan tayo eh. Gawa partido pag natalo. Anyway, Tito Soto is, syempre, Nationalist People's Coalition. And um, uh, Ping and Tito, you know, some people are saying, are they trying to project themselves as some kind of a third force, third force or opposition? Not exactly aligned with the administration either, no? Um, tandem flate, uh, floated, sorry, to gauge public reaction, we presume. So what was your, your uh, reaction to this, uh, Alan, Herman? Uh, well, yan, at least cemented na yan. Uh, Senator Ping is indeed, has announced that he's running for president, same with uh, Senator, Senator President Tito. Uh, ako, I think they're going to do, make it a machinery play more than anything. Uh, I think they're uh, going to rely on their grassroots machinery building capabilities in order to further their their candidacy more than marketing and or messaging Lito Banay, sir? uh well tito is doing very well in the vice presidential race the numbers are pretty good uh, especially if there are fewer candidates for vice president but uh, senator ping my friend i'm sorry to say is not doing very well yeah he's kind of yeah, in, in, all the way in, down yeah there. yeah in the doldrums right now no? but of course uh, anything can happen in politics no? so we hope, uh, well, we wish, we wish them the best. Mm -hmm. Okay. By the way, would Bing Luxon slide down and be, let's put him here in the VP column, and be someone else's uh, vice uh, president? Uh, he, he, he ran for president in, twen in 2004 and, um, uh, well, didn't do very well, of course, as we know. What, what is the answer here? Can he, can he slide down? Would he slide down, even if he's already said that he's going to run for president? You know, knowing Ping, he's not the sort of guy who would slide down. Uh, he would either go for it all the way or just, uh, if the numbers are not going to be with him, he will run for senator or retire, as uh, Lito said. Uh, of course, other senators, uh, along with him, uh, have the luxury of returning to the Senate if they run for high office and then they don't make it because their terms end uh, in uh, 2025. So, may, may <laughs> but anyway, um, before um, we go further, no, since we're talking about Ping and Tito, we, I want to bring into the discussion Isco Moreno. Uh, Isco Moreno, is he announcing this September, this month of September or October? Let's start with Tito Banayas. <laughs> I, I, I don't know exactly when he's going to announce. When he's going to announce yes. that he will run for president. Well, is he running for president or VP? We don't know that either. No. Oh, um, okay. That's still, I, I think he's uh, looking at the numbers. He's uh, looking at the uh, machinery that would support him. Although machineries, uh, political machineries do not matter too much in oh, Philippine yes, elections. It's, yeah. really, uh, it's really the air war, the SOC med war. Yeah. It's not really... Uh, yes, machineries yeah. really well, do not matter okay. because flags, political parties are just flags of convenience in this country. Eh. Right. Palipat lipat lang yan. Pag nanalo right. na, lipat lahat. Uh -oh. Doesn't uh -oh. really matter so much. Uh, actually, I think Sir Lito is being a bit uh, coy, but um, <laughs> I, I think I think that's where uh, Mayor Isco is going. Uh, oh. If I mean to to Sir Lito's earlier point about uh, free market votes are the de determinant in yeah. a national election rather than negotiated votes or machinery, then uh, Mayor Isco has that in spades. Yeah, the, the numbers if, are good. Uh, if, if the numbers are good, what's Number two, three, or one? Uh, number two. Depending on which survey, number two is yeah. na, na number one. I saw the survey na yun, na number two. Siya. Yeah. <laughs> Greg Garcia, sir, on Isco. Oh, wow. I, I, I think... Uh, this is Scott's moment based on the numbers again. Huh? Mm. It's, a, it's great performance and it's being a, I always maintain that Duterte was the everyman 1.0. People are looking for the everyman 2.0. Mm. And right now, he fits the bill. Mm -hmm. From the point of view of uh, just the numbers right now and his character, if I were him, I'd run for president. <laughs> okay. Kanina, nabanggitan natin. Let's go very quickly through this. Gibote Doro and uh, Bongbong Marcos. Uh, let's talk about, uh, just very briefly, uh, Gibo. No? Uh, in 2016, he declined the defense portfolio when offered by President Duterte. Now, six years earlier, as the administration standard bearer, he came in fourth, uh, like we said earlier, in the presidential race. He served as Gloria Arroyo's defense secretary in the last two years. The highlight of his tenure was 
well, the onslaught of Ondoy in September uh, 2009. We talked about that earlier. So you were para bang stay in the private sector na lang ano? Yeah. Medyo mahirapan siya. Of course, Bong Bong Marcos, uh, it helps to look at the past electoral uh, uh, performance. Uh, in 2016, we all know, uh, as uh, Miriam Defensor Santiago's running mate, uh, he came in a very close second to Lenny Robredo, near 200,000 votes shy of the vice presidency, filed an electoral protest. Um, and uh, now he's talking about whether he runs. And earlier, like you guys said, uh, you know, it would be interesting to see Sarah Duterte, Bong Bong Marcos, or Baliktad, no? Marcos, Sarah Duterte. What did you say again earlier, Alan? Bo, Sa Duterte, uh, Marcos, no? Or Marcos, Duterte? Uh, yeah, I believe it's um, Mayor Inday uh, for president and uh, Bong Bong Marcos for vice president. All right. I think that's a more likely scenario. Okay, okay. But uh, one quick question on, on Bong Bong Marcos. If he makes it, whether as presidency, uh, sorry, whether as president or vice president, is this going to amount to like the uh, greatest comeback of all time, even if by proxy, the, the son for the father? Because, I mean, Tumakbu Senador, I mean, Tumakbu Senador, nanalo sila, talo si Bombong sa VP, no? Is it going to be, is that what it's going to amount to? Or, or, you know, since it's been so long, have people forgotten? Greg Garcia, sir? I, you know, I, I maintain uh, that Marcos is, a, is such a strong brand even now, you know? And uh, I think, when, when you review it, you know, uh, a lot of the people running the country now were really young people then, eh? young teenagers. And let's face it, for them, it was such a great time, you know. So the memory of uh, martial law, the bad side of martial law, I think matters to them at much. They were not that affected. And you can see from um, the fact that Aimee got elected, <coughs> Bombong got elected, the numbers of Bombong are looking good. It's a strong brand. Marcos is a strong brand. All right. Uh, kanina, nabanggitan natin siyempre ang PDP Laban. And the other half, uh, of course, has a candidate of its own uh, until and unless he says no. And, and uh, you know, isa pa siyang, siya pa yung isa pang daw na gustong tumakbo presidente. Of course, Manny Pacquiao. Let's put him here in the president's uh, column. Uh, uh, so either um, he runs for president uh, or uh, for the Senate or retire from politics. That, that's what he said. Uh, he's, he's done well. He's done well in, in electoral uh, battles, of course. But should Manny Pacquiao run for president? Uh, and uh, what's going to happen to him, Kaya? Kung, kung well, the numbers don't look good for Pacquiao at this point. <clears throat> and I also think the Filipino people have a way of bracketing you. Eh. Parang nakakahuna, eh. Parang sa kanila, Pacquiao senador ka na lang, okay ka na dyan. Huwag ka na mag-ambisyon, hanggang dyan ka na lang. I think that's how people look at him. It's a reward, in fact. It's a political reward for the uh, fame and glory he brought the country. But I think the Filipinos know that uh, certain candidates have up to a certain category only. And, and the numbers right now are showing it. No? I think this is one election where people will look at competence, will weigh competence quite um, much more than, you know, Really? popularity or yeah. anything else. Wow, that, that, and, that sounds uh, so good. I if, hope that that's... If that, if that uh, with that as a premise, I don't think uh, Senator Mani, even if he runs, will win. We'll give you more on the presidential and vice presidential wannabes after the break. Stay with us. Let's jump to this, no? Trillanes, uh, Sonny Trillanes, well, only because uh, he's always been an interesting character. Um, he ran in 2016, main attack dog, I think, uh, on uh, Duterte, on uh, Rodrigo Duterte. Pero ang dami sinabi ni Trillanes, when Lenny and Ping talked, uh, no way down, nasusuportahan niya, uh, ng Magdalo, yung kanyang partido, si Ping. So, what about Sonny Trillanes? Uh, sh should we just say goodbye to him? Should we put him here in the president or the VP column or what? Nobody's answering. Shall we skip it? <laughs> <laughs> well, the um, problem kasi kay Sentry is uh, inaway niya lahat. 
<laughs> so first he was a uh, uh, staunchly anti-Duterte figure. He was the symbol of the uh, anti-admin mm. uh, force. Uh, unfortunately, towards the latter part of his pronouncements, uh, even the the liberal party was yeah. or he was already um, scratching them the wrong way. And I use the word scratching, I'm not rubbing. <laughs> He was scratching them the wrong way. Anyway, oh, Grace Po. Uh, where, where's Grace? Here, here, Grace Po. Okay, Grace Po. I'll, I'll put her here muna dito sa in between the president and the VP column. Um, you know, tato, for, for a while, about a month ago, ang pinag-uusapan, a month and a half ago ba yun, natatakbo na lang daw siya for uh, vice president. Medyo nasunog siya eh, noong 2016, trailblazing, and then in the last few months, uh, her campaign hit boulders. <laughs> so she spent her time and energy defending herself against claims she was not a natural-born Filipino citizen, comic disqualifying her in December 2015, the Supreme Court ruling in March 2016 uh, that uh, uh, her natural-born status and 10-year residency is A-OK. -okay. Ang ending, like number three nga siya sa elections na yon, 2016. So we also know um, that there was that last-ditch attempt by the uh, then-president Noinoy Aquino to unite the three forces, and you can see them on your screens right now, Mar, Grace, and Jojo, Binay, uh, to try and defeat Duterte. And he spoke about that to me on the Friday before the elections, of course. That didn't work. But um, about Grace Pono, if she runs for VP um, and doesn't make it, or, you know, should she... Because, you know, she, she, her term ends in 2025, so even if she runs now, she if she loses, balik lang Senado. But... Kawawa naman ang Senado? Para bang tigasalo lang ng mga natalo or something? So, paano yun? Alito ba na yun? No, I, the numbers I'm seeing is that uh, if she runs for vice president, she is very strong. Um, that's what I'm seeing. No? So, and the fact that she's come up with that, uh, television ads lately seems to show that she's trying to test the waters whether a vice presidential run is uh, possible no? okay. or likely. Okay. Benny Robredo, so... Running for VP or what? Just a while ago, uh, sorry, not just a while ago, a few days ago, you know, people talking about consolidating forces of three or four candidates or what, or is Lenny going, wasn't she supposed to make an announcement this September? Uh, what's going on with Lenny Robredo? Uh, Lito, from what I've heard, she's been uh, talking to the other presidential wannabes, no? and trying to forge uh, unity among the opposition, or what, what can be <clears throat> opposition candidates no, against the Duterte, Marcos uh, brands. No? Mm -hmm. So uh, I wish her well. Uh, um, she has other options like going for a local position. Mm -hmm. She could even run, run for vice president because that is not uh, yes. prohibited yeah. under the it constitution. Is it, it's there. You she know? can run oh, for oh, one re-election for vice president is possible. I think Lenny is such a fine lady, but all her handlers just... Ang kanyang, the way they handled theirs is being the fiercest critic, no? And mm. I think people hate critics naman, eh. Okay, final words very quickly, very briefly. Let's begin with Alan Herman. Uh, I urge all Filipinos to vote, and uh, I'm hoping that uh, Sir Vito Banayo's uh, words earlier, that uh, this will be a competence-based election, will ring true. Uh, let's examine candidates' track records and see what they bring to the table in terms of rising out of this pandemic, this slump. And uh, let's exercise our democratic right, right that is sacred. Mm -hmm. Thank you. At siyempre, magparehistro kasi maingay sa social media, hindi parehistrado. Ano? <laughs> Greg Garcia, sir. This is going to be a uh, defining year for us, the election, because I think it was mentioned earlier, these are tough years. no? So we should be very discerning and look at people with achievements. No? There are some candidates that... Uh, have some have good track records. So let's look at the track records rather than just as their names. No? Thank you, sir. Lito, I, I will say sir? amen to what uh, Greg said. No? Uh, this is uh, one election where people, especially the young people, no, uh, will, because it's their future that, that is at stake, they will look very closely at the accomplishments, the qualifications of the candidates as well as, of course, the character issue of whether they're corrupt or not. No? Mm -hmm. uh, most people define character as co whether corrupt or not anyway, so that's, that's going to be the equation. No? Yeah. So I think that, that, uh, that if, if more young voters go to the polls, no, uh, that could be a defining moment for Philippine elections. All right. Well, thank you to our guests uh, tonight. Uh, Mr. Dito Banayo, sir, thank you.
Mr. Greg Garcia, thank you, sir. And Mr. Alan Herman, thank you so much for being with us. We've been told before, don't talk politics at the dinner table or at a family reunion or in Viber groups and risk digital warfare. But we can talk about it here at this table. This is Politics as Usual. I'm Pia Ontiveros. Thank you for joining me. Simula na ng pagpapakilala ng mga kakandidato sa 2022 elections, isa sa mga una unang nagpahayag ng intensyong makabalik sa Senado si JV Ejercito. Kasama natin siya ngayon para alamin ang kanyang pananaw sa iba't ibang mahalagang issue at iba iba't ibang mga uh, uh, mga sinabi na niya dati. Magandang gabi sa iyo as uh, former Senator JV Ejercito. Let's begin with this. Uh, how would you handle the uh, pandemic differently? Well, probably, um, yeah, no, uh, with what is happening right now, I, I mean, I, I think the whole world was caught by surprise. But I would think that um, had um, the universal health care law, uh, I hope that it will be given importance and priority because this law is all encompassing. And the COVID and the pandemic now expose the weaknesses of our health care system. So I uh, be, be the principal sponsor of the universal health care law. I would say that then um, we still need to give priority to this law because this is really complete. No, um, it's giving access to good quality health care for all Filipinos, mm. and included in this law, Pia, is the improvement of the health facilities. No, which is now very evident that um, um, a lot of our health facilities or hospitals are now being overwhelmed. Part of the universal health care law is the improvement, the expansion, rehabilitation of all the health facilities all over the country. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping yeah. Yeah, that uh, are, during are my tenure, Senator JV as that, chairman of the uh, committee, yeah, yes, Pia. Yeah. So sorry, that's the problem in Zoom. Eh. But are you saying yes. that if uh, uh, may better implementation of universal health care, Law, you are saying, and, and, and this that had done been done before the pandemic, pandemic that we would not have been in this uh, situation. Well, I think that um, the universal health care law would help a lot no? because, uh, as I mentioned, part of it is the improvement of the health facilities, and also now that um, all Filipinos will now be covered, um, it is already being you know, it is now. Um, benefiting all Filipi uh, everybody, no, especially the COVID patients. But um, yeah, that's my uh, my um, my regret of not being in the Senate right now, because we know that we were able to pass this landmark law. But you know, Pia, the implementation phase is the other half of it. No, and being the principal sponsor and mm. author, I um, I would have preferred to be there in the Senate. Hope. Um, Preferably in the implementation phase because this is a five to ten year program, Pia. No? It's not um, as if mm. uh, when, when passed, it, everything will be okay already. It's a five to ten year program. It's a work in progress. Yeah. So I was hoping that I would have continued my tenure in the Senate, but unfortunately, everybody knows that uh, I didn't make it uh, because of many factors. Yes. But yes. Uh, that is, one, that is oh. one of the reasons that I really would want to be back in the Senate no, to make sure that uh, this law yeah. is implemented okay. properly so that this will be this will benefit this will benefit and help Philippines especially now in this time of pandemic yes in, in other words what you're saying uh, San JV is that uh, although it is the executive as we all know the DOH health department that will uh, uh, that that runs things that op that does the uh, the operation side of things. As a senator, you would have had oversight uh, function, and therefore you would have yes. been able to shepherd this uh, better. But also very quickly, uh, Senator JV, this is also uh, and almost personal to you, right? Yes, uh, P. Yeah, of course, um, I'm quite proud to say that in my in in my six year tenure in the Senate, I was able to past two landmark legislations, that is the universal health care law and the creation of the Department of 
human settlements. So it's quite personal for me because um, being the principal sponsor, of course, uh, it's called my baby. No? Uh, and had I been in the Senate right mm. now, of course, I will make sure it's different that uh, when the principal sponsor is there, they will, um, you will make sure that uh, this yes. uh, will be funded properly. It will be given importance, Pia. Yes, what I meant, uh, Senator JV, when I said personal, is that uh, you yourself, like many of us, uh, most of us, I think, uh, have lost friends and family oh, yes. uh, in this pandemic, right? Yes, yes, correct, uh, Pia. I, uh, in fact, I, I tweeted uh, recently that uh, three of my uh, friends, one very close friend, uh, Rafa Dinglasa, no, uh, is, uh, became um, uh, victims of the pandemic. That's why it's uh, it hits me personally. No, that's uh, that you know. Um, I wish I could have done more had I been there. Also, I could have helped. No, um, but I'm still hoping that you know um, we will still uh, see an end to this uh, pandemic. Yeah. Senator Jave, if you are able to return to the Senate, what would your top economic agenda be? And uh, does the electric train set uh, behind you uh, have anything to do with that? Yes, yeah, no, um, aside from passing the universal health care law and the creation of the Department of Human Settlements, uh, probably in, in our past interviews, Pia, probably you can, you can remember that I've been also consistent my advocacy on the infrastructure development no um as you can see by background right now um i have an electric train system at home because i have been fascinated and i have been really advocating the railway system um ever since so no? um before the start of the Duterte administration i've already uh, requested uh, in fact I, I set a meeting with um incoming secretary Arthur Togade to prioritize the railway system. And I'm quite happy, Pia, that uh, during my term in the Senate, as Vice Chairman of Committee on Finance, I was the one in charge of uh, defending most of the build, build, build program under the DOTR, which included the North mm -hmm. Rail system, the subway system, the modernization of the airports, and the Mindanao railway system. So, Pia, I'm hoping that, um, I know it's a pandemic, and uh, um, had um, given, if I were given the, the chance, I would still prioritize infrastructure development that, so that while the world now is, uh, is at a halt, hopefully if we, if we can prioritize uh, infrastructure development and catch up with our ASEAN neighbors, then probably when the world welcomes mm -hmm. everybody up and, and uh, opens when this pandemic is over, at least we can already be attractive already again, no? Um, to the world, no? Uh, I will still continue to mm -hmm. uh, push for um, infrastructure development for health and also mm -hmm. um, housing because, uh, Pia, these are things that will improve the quality of lives of our people, which I, uh, I uh, promised yeah, no, in 2013. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, we all hope that we can see a no-nonsense nationwide railway system within our lifetime, <laughs> Sana. I but, uh, know, Senator I JV, uh, we're, we need to go to a break. But my question, uh, my question, which I will ask you to answer at, 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 at the other side of the break, is this: No, we have corruption systemic in our bureaucracy. Lahat ng tao sanay na practically sanay no, no. So the question is, how will you combat this? And more importantly, uh, if there is a and we will use the, ter the term, no, a whiff of corruption. How, uh, how would you react if the president, whoever is uh, going to be president in 2022, would appoint or reappoint uh, someone that uh, has corruption issues? I'm going to ask you that question to answer that question when we come back. Center, former Senator J.V. Ejercito, ipagpapatuli natin ang panayam kay J.V. Ejercito sa pagbabalik ng news.ph. Alright, kasama pa rin natin ngayon si dating Senador J.V. Ejercito na gustong makabalik sa Senado itong uh, 2022 election. Senator J.V., ang tanong ko kanina, ano po yung sagot ninyo? Well, um, yeah, no? uh, first of all, integrity 
um, credibility and track record is very important. No? So uh, corruption has been uh, plaguing our system for so long. That is why uh, it's very important those who will be uh, those who will be appointed to make sure that uh, has uh, a very clean track record no? because that will really affect um, the whole bureaucracy. And Pia, if I may add, no, um, they say that there's only a few good men in government. No? And uh, I have mm. always been particular in credibility and integrity because I have. I have tried so much in my 18 years of being in public service to keep my name and uh, my track record of public service record unblemished. So uh, be rest assured that when it comes to integrity and credibility, I will always adhere to my values. Yeah. All right. We're, we're going to try and go very quickly through other questions, uh, Senator JV. The last six years has been about uh, the war on drugs uh, during the Duterte administration. Will you support an ironclad, no-nonsense anti-drug policy, or will you tweak this? Uh, of course, depending on who the next president. No, will you tweak this? Will you say na taka muna sumobra puta yadit sa war on drugs? Medyo ibahin natin ang approach natin. Ano pong gagawin niyo? Ano gusto niyo mangyari? Well, I would say, Pia, that uh, not to defend the president, probably that was his priority program, no? Um, really, anti-drugs has been consistent. But I would say that uh, to tweak it a bit, I would say that we really need to cut the source of the drug problem. And we know where the source is, no? The Philippines became the drug, the hub for drug trade in Southeast Asia because of our, our, our uh, we are the archipelago. But we all know that most of this come from China. And we really have to um, mm. talk, no? Uh, seriously with China about it. I'm sure that if they really uh, are sincere in being our friends, mm. uh, our friend, uh, they can help really put a stop to this. And, uh, for me, um, there are a lot of, um, there has, uh, wala pa rin tayong big fish eh, that has been really uh, caught, no? Para small fries, no? Um, uh, but, uh, so I, me, I would really uh, tweak it and uh, put a stop with it. And uh, I am hoping that uh, China, if they uh, will show their sincerity by helping stop the source of this drug All trade. Right. All right, Senator JV, let's talk about uh, the cost of a senatorial campaign. Uh, allegedly, you know, in the in the neighborhood of 200 to 500 million pesos uh, to win a seat uh, in the Senate, especially because you have your all-important air war plus your social media campaign. Uh, the, the question here is, where will you get the money? Well, uh, Pia, to, I have to be honest with you, no, uh, that I was not really prepared to run uh, two consecutive national elections. Uh, 2019, I ran. Mm -hmm. and unfortunately, I didn't make it. Now it's 2022. I want to. I really intend to run again, and that has, that will be a major consideration in my decision, my final decision. Because I have to be honest with you, that I I am um, funding is a major problem right now for me. Because as I mentioned, I was not prepared to run two consecutive uh, national elections, which is really very, very expensive, as uh, as you mentioned. So I'm hoping that um, mm -hmm. a lot of friends, a lot of uh, people who believe in me would uh, continue to support me and uh, not only show, support me not only um, psychological, give me psychological support, but hopefully funding and uh, financial mm -hmm. support. Okay. And I would really need that. And uh, probably it's hard to believe me, yeah, but... Um, a, a person like me, the, I, that is my problem right now, no? funding. No? Uh, I don't mm -hmm. know if I have to be part right. of it or be ashamed, but um, probably I'm one of the, <laughs> uh, the sons of the presidents or uh, who became the president that has this problem. No? Um, so I just have to okay. be honest. But right. um, oh. Funding will be my main consideration in making my final decision as I make my as okay. I file my candidacy this October. So I'm still um, I'm still talking to my team on how we will be able to raise funds. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, you know, uh, we, we don't have much time, and I have quite a bit of questions, but uh, we've come to the portion. I have seven questions for you, Sanjay uh, that will be answerable by yes or no lang. Wag na muna mag-explain, no? Tingnan ko kung kailangan pa na explanation mamaya. So the first yes or no question is, do you favor easier public access to the cell end of the president, the vice president, and lawmakers, including senators, like yourself, if you were to return to the Senate? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. Number two question. Do you support lifting foreign uh, ownership limits in the 1987 Constitution? Uh, you did file a uh, foreign liberalization uh, bill uh, back in 2014. Yes or no? Yes. Third question. Yes or no, Senator JV. Do you favor a reimposition re of the death penalty for drug-related offenses? For drug-related activity, yes. Yeah. Yes, and also I remember in 2019 you said that you would favor one for plunderers. Number four, should a sitting president be allowed to run for vice president even if the Constitution does not expressly prohibit it? Yes or no? Um, no. No, okay. So meaning... Anyway, never mind, Mama, any explanation. <laughs> Next, uh, question number five. Do you favor a resumption of peace talks with communist rebels? Yes or no? Yes. And last question. Should the country be more aggressive in protecting its maritime interests in the West Philippine Sea? Yes or no? Yes. All right. And very quickly, just a follow-up. Ganina, sabi mo, yung uh, no, hindi na dapat tumakbo ang uh, sitting president. You're referring, of course, to uh, President Duterte, who, uh, well, uh, as of uh, yesterday, as of today, is running for VP uh, if, if the PDP Laban Kusi faction has its way. But you, you're saying no? You're saying, what are you saying here? Relax na lang siya, ganon? Yes. Uh, it's personal, Pia, because I, uh, I consider pres the president as a friend. Uh, way back when he was mayor of Dabao, I was also mayor. Um, there's nothing more to prove, no? Um, six, yeah, six years, mm. I would say you... Doesn't need to prove himself anymore. He doesn't have to prove anything anymore. And I think at his age, I think he should relax, no? And ako personal, Pia, he's my friend. Mm. I don't get to see him anymore because I'm out of um, position. Yeah. I, I think I would love to go mm. back to... Davao and uh, go dining with him in Conchings and all those other eateries no, that he mm -hmm. used to take yeah. me around. So I think he should relax at his <laughs> okay. age. It's personal. Okay. I like how you preface your answer with, he's my friend. But anyway, Sanjay, I also wanted to ask about this. So, pag-usapan din natin yung napakalaking elepante sa kwarto. That is a literal translation of the elephant in the room. Okay na ba kayo ng kuya mo, si former Senator Jingoy Estrada? Or never ever na ba kayong magiging okay dahil metampu pa rin kayo sa isa't isa? Well, uh, to be honest with you, uh, everything's not okay. Because uh, we are again in the same dilemma, no? Uh, as like 2019, uh, I'm still hoping in the future, Pia, when our political careers are finally over <laughs> in the future, we'll just laugh about it, you know? Uh, after all, we're, we're brothers. But of course, we, I have to be honest that, you know, what happened in 2019, it, I'm, I was up for re-election. And I, I think I was doing quite well in the Senate. And I requested my dad and uh, my brother to, I request sana patapusin nila ako because I still have things to do, no? Uh, I would want to see all the things that I have passed, UHC, Croatia Department of Housing, be implemented properly. No? So I don't want anything half-baked. Yeah. So that was my request. So it's, okay. ano, yun lang yung, okay. what is, ano? Yung hinanakit ko. Yeah. Uh, I have to be put it my words. In an, oh, okay. I'm hoping, but I'm hoping in the future, yeah. Uh, probably when we both retire in politics, no, we'll just, you know, probably just the time that, you know, we can uh, oh. heal all of this. Oh, nabanggit mo, nabanggit mo yung 2019. Of course, in 2019, ang nangyari sa inyo, you didn't make it. Medyo nalaglag ka, sorry, <laughs> sa number 13, no? Uh, but with yes. uh, how many votes? Um, 
14. Anyway, number 13 kayo, and then si Senator Jingoy naman, number 15. Kumbaga, ang, ang sabi ng mga tao, na hati ang boto, you canceled each other out. Your father ran for Manila mayor, um, and uh, yung uh, anak ni, anak ni uh, Jingoy, di ba? Tumakbo uh, yeah. sa San Juan. Kumbaga, para bang um, na, ano eh, na walang kayo ng focus, di ba? Yes. And you don't yes. want that to happen again, this 2022, right? Yes, Pia. I think we spread ourselves too thin. We were fighting so many battles in 2019. So I'm hoping that uh, we learn from that lesson and it doesn't happen again in 2022. You know? But uh, Pia, unfortunately, we only have a month left. And I think we are both again. Mm -hmm. I want to run again because I think I still have a mission to, to accomplish um, my brother said he wants to run again, so I'm still hoping. I'm praying hardly for. I'm praying hard for a miracle to happen so that we can settle this um, this uh, circum this uh, situation that we're in right now, Pia. But um, I may, I really have nothing in mind, but my passion really, Pia. I would really want to leave something, yeah. no, okay. that is not half baked, and I know that I could still okay. do a lot more. Okay, and of course, you have two weeks to decide before uh, the filing of certificates of candidacy on uh, the first week of October, sa Comelec. Uh, in the meantime, yes. I'm sure, Senator JV, and I'm sorry, we don't have en enough time to talk about it. Tuloy pa rin yung motorismo mo, your motorcycle tourism. <laughs> Senator, Former Senator JV Hercito, thank you very much uh, for being with us tonight here on News.ph. Salamat po sa inyo. Sa pandemia karon. Mahinong danon ang pagpaambit sa tukmang impormasyon. Ang pagpakatap o fake news, labot sa mga bakuna, batok sa COVID-19, mo'y hinungdan sa kahadlok o pagduda. Tungod ni